It's been a, a long, long time coming, but I know a change is going to come. We have been knowing that a change is going to come for a very long time. How many of you have spent many, 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 many years telling yourselves that change is going to come? Well, let me just ask you this. What do you think the universe does when you keep telling it that a change is going to come? You keep living in a world where a change is going to come. And that's what I really want to talk about here today. This concept that we have got to stop waiting. We have got to stop thinking that tomorrow is going to be a better day. Because I don't know about you, but I can't live in tomorrow. I will never ever live in tomorrow. I will always be living in today. Even if I play Annie in the musical Annie. <laughs> One minute. Even if I... Even, even if I play Annie and sing tomorrow, I'm talking about tomorrow. So, how would you like today to really get a concept for your life that allows you to start living your life today. Yes? yes. The front of the house gets it. <laughs> you know, just because you're back there, you know, I can see you. I could actually tell you who's in those back rows. Chad, I see you. I can see everybody back there. Scott, I can see you. So, so the funny thing about this song is change has already come. Chain, change came in the form of Moses. Moses brought change to the Egyptians. Change came in the form of Jesus. Jesus brought change to the Jewish nation. And when Jesus came, he said, I didn't come here to obliterate Moses. I came here to expand on Moses because Jesus understood this an idea of change. Change came in the form of Muhammad. Change came in the form of Buddha. Change comes in many, many, many faces. Martin Luther King, John F. Kennedy, Oprah Winfrey. Truly. But you know who else change came in the form of? Ernest Holmes. Change came in the form of Ernest Holmes. And the problem with change is that once change comes, we don't want to change it. I'll catch up. I'll let you catch up. Now think about that. Once change comes, we have an aversion to changing it. Once we recognize change, we think we've arrived. Yes? yes. Someone say no. <laughs> once, we talk, once, once change comes, we think we've arrived. So the title of my talk today is I Have Arrived. And when I gave that title to Rita, I Have Arrived, you know, it felt kind of pompous. It was like, I wonder if people are going to read this and think, oh, he finally thinks he's arrived. I have arrived. <laughs> but that wasn't it. That wasn't it at all. And as many of you know, this, this week I went to Toronto to install Reverend Jonathan Zenz into his center. Yes. So the title of my talk is I Have Arrived. And I have to tell you, I, I have re purposefully left myself left, less prepared today because I wanted to know what was really here in this. But what I understand is that every time I arrive, I realize that I always seem to arrive at the departure gate. Now just think about that for a moment. Every time I arrive, I arrive at the departure gate, which would lead me to understand that I will never truly arrive anywhere on time. <laughs> I will never, tr that was for you, Kevin. I will never, never truly arrive anywhere because wherever I arrive, it is always going to be a departure. And the problem is, we seem to think that it is our job to arrive somewhere. Even religious science. Religious science, I think, sometimes thinks it has arrived at the greatest teaching on this planet. No, it has arrived at a departure gate so that we can take an element of change that came through Ernest Holmes and take it somewhere else. Not so we can sit down and think we have it all. Or that we get it all. 
Change, change is not a destination. We are not here to arrive at a place of change. We are not here to arrive to a place where we have changed. Oh my God, I have changed. No. Unless you're doing dream girls. No. We are here not to arrive anywhere, but we are here to understand that change is not a destination. It is a departure. Change is not a noun. Change is a verb. And it's ongoing. And we will constantly change and constantly evolve and constantly grow and constantly challenge ourselves and constantly contradict ourselves from what we said yesterday and constantly grow new thoughts and new ideas only to the degree that we're willing to understand this concept and flow with it. The biggest change for me this year, I want to tell you, has been the departure of Reverend Jonathan Zenz. Huge change for me. Huge change in my office. Huge change in my life. I'm one of my dearest, dearest friends. And yet, notice I used the word departure for Jonathan, because I get it now. Jonathan's departure from NoHo was a major change for him so that he could arrive in Toronto and really set the chain, set the stage for the major changes that are now occurring in Toronto. That was his job. That's his journey. And that's every single one of your journeys if you're willing to take it. If you're willing to realize that where you stand right now in your life is at a departure gate. And that your next step is to walk onto the plane. Or maybe just get rid of the plane and just start flying. And I, I don't even say that jokingly because I think there is that within us that could learn how to fly if we just stopped saying we can't. I think there is in us the ability to say we can to every single thing imaginable. I just think we don't imagine enough. We don't imagine big enough. And I think it's because we all think we've arrived somewhere and that we're here to live in this area. And we're not. We are here to constantly take off. Constantly take off. Um, so, so I went to Toronto and we went to do Jonathan's installation. And I have to tell you, it was very, very prof profound for me. We said Toho because when I got there, I realized that Jonathan was so equal to success and love and truth in his life that he showed up in a, in a little part of Toronto where all of that existed. The, the, this little place in Toronto that called him forth from Southern California with people just like us I really, did, didn't it feel like that, Karen, Rita? It felt like we were in NoHo. They were just as loud. <laughs> they were just as crazy. They danced just as funny. It was like the most, and he was surrounded by love. Just love everywhere. It was the most, and a lot of his people are taking CPR, so they, were all, they all knew me. It was just this most incredible journey. And what I realized was people are absolutely hungry for change. People are hungry for change. Why? Because change is our innate truth. Change is who we really are. And when we get really comfortable with change, how many of you have ever thought to yourself that change is a little difficult? Okay, <laughs> sometimes. Okay, what if we were so comfortable with change, it was literally what we are here to do? And you know what? It's what we're here to do. We are here to evolve. We are not here to slow down. We are not here to stagnate. We are not here to become something. We are here to live the concept of change, to live the concept of evolution. We cannot become comfortable. And what I'm really here to talk about today is that we cannot become comfortable in this teaching. It was so fascinating to be in Jonathan's presence, to watch him have been in this center for so long, and now to watch him as the spiritual director of his center. And it was like, I, I felt, part of me felt old, because I thought, oh my God, my child is, look at him. But part of me just constantly stood back in awe of watching him be who he is now and watching him constantly change and change and change and evolve and watching people rotate around him. It was just breathtaking. And what I really got was that they have never heard science of mind spoken the way Jonathan Zen speaks it. He is just so radical. I don't know where he gets it. 
And, and these people were coming up to me saying, we don't know what you taught him or how you taught him, but we love what he's saying. And it's nothing we've ever heard before. It's so different. That's what this world needs. It needs every single one of you to get this so clearly that you redefine it. That it's something new for you. And it does start with the basics. This, this center of his, the people are just beginning to get this teaching. But here's the great thing, and what I noticed, Jonathan doesn't te talk to them as beginners. He talks to them from where we are now. And it really is time for this center to start teaching from where we are now, and not from where we were. And I am fully committed to that, as you, any of you that are in my class right now, the seminar lectures, know. Because it is time for us to, it, it, it's been a long, long time of coming, and it's time for us to let the change start changing again. Are you good with that? Yeah. Are you good with that in your life? Are you willing to, in your life, look at your life and not say, I'm good with this, this is just okay. And be okay with, I'm okay with changing this up. Yeah. Yeah. Changing it up. I will change it up. Maybe just change it up to change it up. Just to see what more can I know here. Maybe I think I know too much here. Maybe I think I know everything there is to know here. Do you know it is absolutely impossible for you to know everything there is to know at any given time. Do you know that? No, you don't, because that's impossible for you to know. And there you have it. So, Jonathan's installation was, uh, uh, you know, I have a hard time cont containing my emotions when I have to talk and be emotional at the same time, but this was, this was beyond my wildest imagination. I walked up to Rita and I said, when you get a church, you're installing yourself. I said, I can't do this again. It was just so beautiful. There was a moment they were rehearsing the music and I was just standing at the podium looking at my things and I literally had to leave the theater. I just lost it. It was just because I get it. You know, change is so emotional. Change, the good, the good thing that change is, is so emotional. When you really feel things changing, it's just such an emotional, visceral feeling to know that we are moving, we are growing. And that's what's going on here. We must always, always, always find ourselves at the departure gate. So, as we flew back here, we were going to the departure gate in Toronto to come home yesterday. Rita and I were trying to figure out if our plane was on time, and so we were looking up at the departures gate. And I looked up at the departures board, and I asked myself, how many of those places have I never been to? Have you ever done that? Look at a departure, what those, that big thing, and it says where everybody's going. And I was like, how many of these places have I never been to? And there were a lot. Some of them I went, I don't want to go there, but maybe I should get rid of those thoughts. Maybe, you know, maybe there's something in Iowa that I need to go see. <laughs> oh, there's nothing halfway about the Iowa way we... Anyway, so... So did you ever do that? You look up at the board and you're like, oh my God, I've never gone there. You know, I love that I get to take a cruise twice a year. In the summer, I'll go to Istanbul. I've never been to Istanbul, right? We are going there, right? Istanbul. Where are we going? Ibiza. Oh, Ibiza. Same thing. It's a place. <laughs> We're not going to Istanbul? Okay, I've never been to Istanbul, though. So someday, I want to go to Istanbul. Clearly, it's coming through me. Can't you feel it? So, <laughs> told you I didn't prepare this. <laughs> so I want to go where I've never been. I want to go where the people go. <laughs> My God, that's Little Mermaid. I want to go walking around on those, what do you call them? Feet. Yeah, okay, so, you know what though? It's like the Little Mermaid. I want to be like her. I do. I want to I wanna jump out of the ocean and say, oh my God, look at this. There's a world I've never been to. <laughs> no. I am making a point today. I really am. I want to go to places I've never been because it's time for me to change even more. Yes? Don't you feel, don't you feel that? Don't you want to go to places you've never been? What's keeping you from going? Money. Did you just say money? Oh, wow. Okay, money. Okay, I'll go there. So, 
If you think there is something keeping you from where you've never been, you are so delusional. It's just not the truth. It's not the spiritual truth, is it? No. Does anyone think that's the spiritual truth? No. Is there anyone here who really thinks money can keep them from doing what they want to do? No. Okay, if your answer is even a modicum of yes, you need to get in there and root that out. Seriously. I had never been to Toronto, by the way. Somehow I missed Toronto in all my travels. I'd never been to Toronto. Toronto is absolutely gorgeous. It was just spectacular. Just spectacular. And yet, the same people were walking the streets there as walk here. And the same people at Jonathan Center are at this center. We are the same people. It's that, that, that one people living on one planet. This sense of oneness. That's really what this is all about. Oneness. Something really wonderful happened in Toronto for me. You know, we have what's called the Declaration of Principles. And we read them. You all read them this morning, some of them. You read an abridged version of them. And when we were in Toronto, it is um, required for someone to read the Declaration of Principles for the minister who's being installed in order for that minister to say yes to it all. So um, the Reverend Rita Andriello got up and read those. And I'd never heard them read the way she read them. There was such power to her words. There was such passion to her words. It was as though I was hearing them for the first time. And I can guarantee you most people in that congregation were hearing them for the first time. And certainly they were all hearing them read that way for the first time. And if change is going to continue to be the living, breathing entity that it is, then there are tools, there are elements of change. And the Declaration of Principles, while written a long time ago, are incredible elements of change. So here to read them for us today, Rita, Reverend Rita is going to come up and read these for you. And I invite you, even if you think you know these, just listen to what it is that Ernest Holmes said we are all about. Let's get there. We have an awesome faith. Hold on. Oops. Oops. Try it now. All right. Can you hear me? No. William? William? Wait, he had to jump down and turn around. All right. Ah. <laughs> we have an awesome faith. And I just want you to just take this in and just hear and feel and embody what we actually believe. We believe in God, the living spirit almighty, one indestructible and self existent cause. This one manifests itself in and through all creation, but is not absorbed by its creation. The manifest universe is the body of God. It is the logical, necessary outcome of the infinite self-knowingness of God. We believe in the incarnation of spirit in humankind and that all people are incarnations of the one spirit. We believe in the eternality, the immortality, and the continuity of the individual soul forever and ever expanding. We believe that the kingdom of heaven is within us and we experience this kingdom to the degree that we become conscious of it. We believe the ultimate goal of life is to be one of complete emancipation from all discord of every nature, and that this goal is sure to be attained by all. We believe in the unity of all life, and that the highest God and the innermost God is one God. We believe that God is personal to all who feel this indwelling presence. We believe in the direct revelation of truth through our intuitive and spiritual nature and that anyone may become a revealer of truth who lives in close contact with the indwelling God. Mm -hmm. We believe that the universal spirit, which is God, operates through a universal mind, which is the law of God, and that we are surrounded by this creative mind which receives the direct impress of our thought and acts upon it. We believe in the healing of 
conditions through the power of the mind. We believe in the control of conditions through the power of the mind. We believe in the eternal goodness, the eternal loving kindness, and the eternal givingness of life to all. We believe in our own soul, our own spirit, and our own destiny. For we understand that the life of humankind is God. Thank you, Rita. Now, I want you to realize that we read a very condensed version of that every Sunday, don't we? Some of those things that come after we believe, and what I said to their congregation was, you are about to follow a journey with Reverend Jonathan, where whatever comes after the two words, I believe, will manifest in your life to the degree that you believe it. So be very, very, very careful what you say after I believe. Because if you do happen to believe it, it will manifest. That is what we believe and that is the way it works. So we believe that the ultimate goal of life, now listen to this, this is what Ernest Holmes says. We believe that the ultimate goal of life is to be com to have be complete emancipation from all discord of every nature. Complete emancipation from all discord of every nature. I believe that. Do you believe that? Yes. That it's possible to live completely emancipated from every form of dis discord possible. And he goes on to say, and th this goal is sure to be attained by all. And now I get back to this change that's a long time coming. I don't know that we're really believing this. We should be beyond this. We should be at a place where we are already emancipated. You know, that song that Curtis sang, of course, was a song by, by the African-American community when it started. It changes a long time coming, but it's coming, and it's, it's coming, it's happening. And we've seen it happen. And yet, even in this country, there is still race prejudice. In this country, there is still bigotry. In this country, there is still homophobia. This change is a long time coming, but you know what? You and I today, we could actually decide today to not, m not continue with the thought, the belief. I believe that change is a long time coming is a belief I don't want anymore. I believe that change is who I am. I believe that change is what I am, and I believe that change is an active ingredient of society as it continues to grow and evolve. And that's what Ernest Holmes is saying. He also says, we believe in the healing of conditions through the power of the mind. Through the power of the mind. He didn't say through the power of the mind in conjunction with this, that, and the other thing. We believe in the healing of conditions through the power of the mind. You have a power in your mind. Your mind is powerful, full of power. You have the capacity in your mind to change everything. Nothing else do you need. Nothing else. Tools, fine. But I believe we're going to a place in mind where we actually get it. It's done in mind. We believe in the control of conditions through the power of the mind. Controlling conditions doesn't mean I'm taking my hands and controlling everything. It means I'm in control of my thoughts. I'm in control of my reactions. I'm in control of how I spend my life. That's what that means. We believe in our own soul, our own spirit, our own destiny. For we understand that the life of humankind is God. It is right there in the Declaration of Principles to what we believe, that my life is God's life. And therefore, I am God. And I don't need to sugarcoat it. I don't need to soft pedal it. I don't need to find a way to make it palatable. I just don't care anymore. It is time to stand up and say, I am God. And so are you. And so is every single person on this planet. You know, I asked Rita one day, I said, one day, the other day when we were traveling, I said, does it feel to you sometimes that life takes place from event to event? Does it ever feel like that? Like, here was this event, 
And then here was this event, and I know what I'm going to do in two weeks. Oh, I'm going, oh, and I know I'm going on a cruise. Like event to event. And I said, doesn't it feel sometimes like we go from event to event, especially when you have a busy week? I'm sure Rick Tamlin, who flies from country to country to country to country, since I see you sitting here today, you know, it feels like you're from event to event, event to event. And yet, and then I said, or, or, does it feel like it's what's happening between the events that really is what life is all about? Or is it all of it? And is it time for us to stop thinking that there's more of God in any one place than in another? What would it be like if we lived our life from moment to moment, not event to event, or happening to happening? What would it be like if every moment was an event? Because we were living, because we were alive, because we were letting the change that we are flow through us constantly. How do I live all of my life in an atmosphere of gratitude for what is happening in this very moment, not just the events? Change is right now, here, right now, and it is happening in this center, and it's happening places all over the universe. Gandhi said we must become the change, and I have never, ever, ever understood that more clearly than I do right now. Become the change doesn't mean necessarily that I step into action to change the world. We must become the change we wish to see in the world by understanding that change is my nature. Change is who I am, it's what I am. I will always, always, always arrive at the departure gate because I am always, always, always evolving into the more. And it is just happening. It just happens. You don't have to make it happen. God is. God just is. Good just is. Prosperity just is. Success just is. Health just is. And if we just settled into being that, everything would change for us. My prayer, as I left Toronto, as I left Jonathan Center, get a little emotional, when I was leaving, it was very difficult to say goodbye to Jonathan. Because I saw his center, I saw him, and I saw where he was going. And I said during my, 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 my talk, during his installation, I said, it's very possible that someday the NoHo Arts Center for New Thought may be known primarily for having been the place where Jonathan Zenz learned his ministry, began his ministry. And I feel that same way about every single person here, that the NoHo Arts Center for New Thought someday may be known for the place where, please insert your own name, we found out who they were, were reminded who they were, and that once they did find out and remember who they were, they went on and changed the world. Not by doing anything in particular, but by living the change so profoundly that everyone around them couldn't help but sing and dance with joy. My prayer for you today, as you leave here today, is that you leave here today a changed person from the person who walked in here. That you get a better sense of who you are and that every single arrival in your life lands you at a departure gate where you then take off. Namaste.